I've been an actor, writer, producer for over 30 years, and I've taught comedy for more than 20. But it was only recently that I fully realized the incredible healing power of creativity. Six years ago, I almost died. I had a massive stroke. I lost the use of my right hand, my right arm, my face was paralyzed, and I spoke like this. The doctors said it would be impossible for me to ever drive my car or play tennis or to ever sing again. Well, they were wrong. They were so, 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 so wrong. <laughs> you know why? The healing power of creativity. After the stroke, I was rushed to a place I like to call the room of death. There were three other people in the room of death whose average age was approximately 275. <laughs> and they breathed like this. It was like I was surrounded by asthmatic pterodactyls. The last thing the nurse said to me before I went to sleep was, I hope you have your affairs in order. <laughs> Not what you want to hear from your nurse at one in the morning. I was convinced I was going to die that night. I had the most horrible nightmares, filled with blood, gore, and samurais riding motorcycles firing submachine guns. <laughs> I might have taken too much medication. The next morning, I was transferred from the room of death to a different room, the room of faint hope. <laughs> there were three other stroke survivors in the room. They were much younger than in the room of death, and they sounded way less like pterodactyls. They were in as bad or worse shape than I was, which only made things worse for me. I knew the stats. One in six stroke victims die Doctor after doctor, giving me test after test after test, had driven me into a high state of anxiety and deep depression. I was worried I was going to have another stroke. I looked around me at the other people in the room, moaning, lifeless. I stared out the window at the mountains. I saw a bird fly by. Birds always remind me of my mom. And that's when the idea hit me. I was going to turn this experience into a play, a comedy, actually, and I'd call it Stroke of Luck. <laughs> as soon as I had the idea, everything changed. The entire narrative flipped. It was like I had been given a new set of eyes. The other people in the room were no longer victims. Now there were powerful characters in my play. These stroke survivors were my heroes, and I had been transformed into a hero in my own play. Resilient, unstoppable, I would survive this so I could be an inspiration to others. I heard a voice in my head. It was my mom's voice, something she used to always say to me when I was a child growing up. No matter how rough things get, do something you love every day. So I did. I started working on the play right away, just not with this hand. <laughs> About a week later, they sent me home. I could barely move my fingers, and I could do this with my arm. I was starting to believe that the doctors were right, that my recovery would be impossible. I was visited by three therapists for one hour each every day. The first exercise we did was to walk for a half an hour every day. My physical therapist said that this would not only be good for my heart and my immune system, but it would dramatically improve my overall quality of life. Wow. Who knew? <laughs> I mean, other than my physical therapist. 
the first exercise we did was something called a pincer strength test. Does anybody know what that means? It's uh, this move. It measures the cinch and the pinch. And it's one of the moves that separates from the, from the other animals and humans. And it also means, that's a really tasty meatball in Italian. <laughs> So I am squeezing, like I am really squeezing hard. I'm giving it everything I've got. Anybody want to guess my score? Zero. zero. My score was zero. You know what I thought? Nowhere to go but up. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of weeks later, we do another test. Using my right hand, taking small, small items and putting them into a cup, I had two and a half minutes. There were 15 items, things like coins, buttons, paper clips. A healthy hand would do all 15 in under 10 seconds. <laughs> I took the entire two and a half minutes. <laughs> Any guesses as to how many I did? Two. I did two. You know what I thought? That's way better than zero! <laughs> Well, who was I kidding? It was incredibly depressing for about a half a second. But I was able to turn it around because I had become a hero in my own play. I was able to see things differently. And thanks to my mom, I was doing something I loved, something creative every day. Some days I'd work on the play. Some days I'd sing. Some days I'd dance. But I'd do something creative every single day. And with my creative juices flowing, I started believing I would get better. This is the power, the healing power of creativity. It makes the impossible seem possible. Now, there have been many studies over the years that support this idea of creativity being a powerful tool for people's healing and recovery. I'm going to cite one in particular. In 2010, the American Journal of Health published a review called The Connection Between Art, Healing, and Public Health. It found that creativity has a positive impact on one's sense of hope, self-worth, and well-being, decreases depression and anxiety, reduces stress, improves cell function, brain function, boosts memory, and releases the neurotransmitter dopamine which is an antidepressant, it actually creates feelings of joy and happiness. It's like chocolate without the calories. <laughs> we had a mantra in recovery. If it's good for the heart, it's good for the brain. If it's good for the heart, it's good for the brain. Come on, everybody, say it with me. If it's good for the heart, it's good for the brain. If it's good for the heart, it's good for the brain. And creativity. It's not only good for the heart and good for the brain, it is great for the soul. Fast forward 15 months. My play, Stroke of Luck, has been an incredible success. I've played across the lower mainland to standing ovations and five-star reviews. My recovery, remarkable. I'm driving my car. I'm playing tennis, although I lose a lot. <laughs> and I've sung in front of thousands of people. This morning when I rose, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. I'm actually not too bad. <laughs> I've become a spokesperson for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. I have started hosting an event called Art After Stroke. My play is being performed to stroke victims in recovery clubs across BC. I've begun singing for hospital patients. I have seen some amazing things. I have seen how creativity in all its forms, music, art, poetry, dance, painting, how it inspires people, how it helps them heal and gives them a better recovery. I have witnessed with my own eyes people who cannot speak, who are like zombies with zero energy, suddenly light up as soon as the piano starts playing. It's like a switch is turned on. And when I start singing, they start singing with me the whole song. People who could not speak. This is not some miracle. This is not magic. It's science. Cre 
creativity makes the impossible seem possible. I started sharing my story about my recovery, about my play. I was talking to this friend of mine who designs video games. We were chatting about how incredibly creative video games are. There, there's the art, there's the voiceover, the music, the technology, the intricate storylines. I discover that we share a common vision, a common dream of using video games to promote positive social change. Amazing. The next day, the very next day, I'm fixing a washing machine. It's part of my day job as a building manager. And there's a guy waiting to do his laundry. We start chatting. He tells me about something called Games for Change, which does exactly what we had been talking about the night before. They have thousands of games that promote positive social change. Everything from healing to climate change, you name it. He tells me about one game in particular called Philo, where gamers create models that can be used for genetic research. Since its inception, more than 350,000 models have been created. 7,000 in the first day alone. I can't believe the incredible potential once we unlock this that's possible. Because it's hard to get people to volunteer to make the world a better place. But it is easy to get them to play video games. <laughs> I get so excited about sharing this idea of the healing power of creativity. This idea of inviting other people to be heroes in my play, in my story, and offering to be a hero in theirs. Speaking of heroes, remember my mom? Do something you love every day? She's my biggest hero. Probably one of the most creative people I ever met. She was an amazing baker. She loved to write stories and tell us stories to inspire us. She was a brilliant dancer. And she came up with the most creative ways to get me to eat food that I didn't want to. <laughs> I wrote another play. It's about her. It's called The Unbreakable Popsicle Stick Gang. Anybody want to hear why it's called that? Yeah. 1965, my father left us. My mom calls an emergency family meeting. There was her, the two boys, and the two girls. She believed in equality. She gave us each a popsicle stick. She said, see if you can break it. And we did. It was easy. <laughs> then she gave us five popsicle sticks. One for each of us, she said. Try it. We tried. We couldn't. We couldn't do it. You could be the incredible Hulk. You could not break five popsicle sticks. See, she said, when we're alone, we're easy to break. But when we're together, nothing can break us apart. She had used creativity to take this moment, which could have been devastating for our family, and turn it into something that would keep us there for each other for the rest of our lives. It makes the impossible seem possible. I was thinking about my mom, creativity, this whole journey, and about how important it was to walk for a half an hour every day, how much that helped me. I still try to do it today. And I was thinking, what if we took it a step further? What if we did something creative, something we loved, for a half an hour every day? Or even 15 minutes, if that's all you got. But do it every day. What could happen? Sign up for a cooking course. Take dance lessons. Learn to play the ukulele. Start writing your play. Imagine what could happen. Imagine your mood improving. Your brain functioning better. Your stress going down. Being kinder to the people around you. Imagine that. And when those people ask you what happened, what made this incredible change in you? You tell them about the healing power of creativity. You tell them about my mom and what she said. Do something you love every day. 
Thank you.